Last Honors to Emerson Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Preparations for a Simple Funeral at the Concord Unitarian Church From the New York Times Concord, Mass., April 28, 1882 The arrangements for the funeral of Mr. Emerson are not yet quite completed. The time for the public service, however, has been fixed at 3.30 on Sunday afternoon, and the place, the Unitarian Church, as already announced. But the order of exercises is not quite arranged. Word has been received by telegraph, in reply to invitations to be present, from the Reverend Dr. W. H. Furness of Philadelphia, and the Rev. Dr. Frederick H. Hedge of Cambridge, announcing that they will attend, and it is expected that the Rev. James Freeman Clark will also take some part in the exercises. It is probable that there will be brief addresses by all of these gentlemen, each of whom has long enjoyed the close friendship of Mr. Emerson. Dr. Furness has been his close friend since childhood, and the two were classmates in the old Boston Latin School. The Unitarian Church here has been without a settled pastor for several months, the Rev. Grinnell Reynolds, its former pastor, being now the secretary of the American Unitarian Association. At the present time he is absent in the West on business connected with his office, and it is thought that he cannot reach here in season for the services which he would be likely to conduct if he were here. In his absence, the Rev. Mr. Brown, a Unitarian clergyman of Brookline, who has supplied the Concord pulpit occasionally of late, may conduct them. Mr. Emerson has attended this church somewhat regularly of late, and its ministers were welcome guests in his home. The same simplicity that characterized the recent funeral of Longfellow will mark Sunday's ceremonies here. There will be an absence of display. The church exercises will not be tirelessly extended, nor severely formal, and there will be no showy procession to the grave. The family and chief mourners, with the exception perhaps of Mrs. Emerson, whose health is delicate, will walk from the old house at the conclusion of the private services there, to the church. After the more public exercises, here the coffin will be borne to the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, the pallbearers walking by its side and friends following on foot. To many these simple and unostentatious ceremonies will recall the funeral and burial of Hawthorne here. This was on a bright sunny June afternoon seventeen years ago. A host of literary people and men and women of distinction were present on that occasion, and no doubt will be gathered in the old town on Sunday afternoon. Longfellow, Holmes, Emerson, Lowell, Fields, Whipple, and Alcott were in the company assembled in this same Unitarian church on that occasion, and after the simple exercises here, consisting mainly of an address by James Freeman Clark, delivered in his particularly quiet and informal way, they walked beside or followed the body of their friend to the same restful village graveyard. Then, as will probably be the case now, there was no hearse and no long line of somber funeral carriages. On the coffin was carried the manuscript of Hawthorne's last and unfinished romance, and his grave was filled with flowers. Emerson's body will be placed in the family vault beside those of the wife of his youth, whose early death, just as he was entering upon his career, so touched and saddened him. Here also are buried the son he lost and the brother. His resting place will be in the neighborhood of that of Hawthorne and also that of Thoreau. Hawthorne is buried in a retired part of the cemetery on the brow of the hill and in the midst of a cluster of tall pines, a spot which was a favorite one with the shy romancer, where he used frequently to stroll during his quiet, retired life at Concord, 
to muse and meditate. Opposite the grave of Hawthorne is Thoreau's, marked by a simple slab, recording only his name and the dates of his birth and death. Fitting notice will before long be taken of Emerson's death by the people of Concord, and some exercises held in which the school children may take part. The social club circle the famous village club which celebrated its centennial anniversary a short time ago, and at which Mr. Emerson made his last appearance on any formal occasion in the town, will take appropriate action on his death at its next meeting. The Concord Summer School of Philosophy will devote a day of its session the coming season, probably Saturday, July 22nd, to a discussion of Mr. Emerson's character and work, by several of the eminent men who take part in the literary work of this particular institution, which invites so many modern philosophers from distant parts to this famous town. Mr. Emerson was the oldest member of the social circle, and had belonged to it for over forty years, and in the summer school of philosophy he took much interest, appearing occasionally when his health would permit at its meetings when some famous essayist was the attraction or some more than ordinary philosophic discussion was the feature many calls have been made at the emerson homestead and messages of condolence received to-day among the callers were mr emerson's venerable long-time neighbor a bronson alcott and dr c a bartol of boston the body of Mr. Emerson has been partially embalmed. The countenance remains the same peaceful and serene look it bore at the time of death. London, April 29. The news, in its obituary article on Ralph Waldo Emerson, says that no history of the development of intellect in the nineteenth century would be complete, which takes no account of Mr. Emerson's works. End of Last Honors to Emerson From the New York Times This recording is in the public domain.